<sighs> All right, I think we're going. Yes, we are. Good afternoon. Welcome <clears throat> to my daily Facebook Live and also YouTube later on. <laughs> um, a little bit flushed, and I'll get to that in a second. That's actually what inspired today's talk, funnily enough, and I'll get to that. Before I do that, let me introduce myself and what these talks are about. My name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't figured that out already. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of Divine Feminine, and as a friend of mine called me a couple of days ago, um, she actually calls me the Guardian of the Feminine, which sounds very intriguing, so I'm going to do some sitting with that title and see how it feels. So welcome to my daily broadcast. Um, yesterday I celebrated my 365th broadcast, hence today's number 366. So if this was a leap year, that'd be one year. Um, or in other words, I'm starting over, another year. Although I realized looking back that my first few broadcasts weren't daily. So I'm going to go to 400, I know, because that will at least give me a guarantee 365 in a row. Because <laughs> I want to be honest. And uh, there's no end to topics, it seems. So today's topic is one of those topics that just hit me literally today. Almost hit me, because I was actually on the bike path, which is why I'm a bit flushed. Um, and it really hit me because, well, <laughs> I guess I'm using that term. I was, I was on the bike path today, riding my bike on the bike path, and the plethora, maybe the word, maybe the abundance of electric vehicles, um, from electric bikes, which are fairly regular now, but now there's electric scooters everywhere, which is, um, mainly it's the uh, company called Bird, B-I-R-D, out of San Francisco are doing them. They're everywhere, and I'm going to get to the point, I know Riding the bike path used to be somewhat fun, driving, riding fast, cruising down, no problem, except for the tourists crossing the bike path without looking. But now there's like double the number of people who are aimlessly, I would just say, or at least so self-engrossed, in, in, so self-engrossed in their own world that they stop in the middle of the bike path on their electric scooters and start doing selfies or talking on the phone without looking behind or in front of them or they cross over or they turn around. I lost count of how many times I almost, maybe not accidentally, <laughs> almost hit somebody because it's like, I'm a bike rider. I've been a bike rider for years and the bike path is a bike path, as in bike, bike path, go together. All these other vehicles that are on there, including people riding, well, not, not just the little scooters, but look like, look like, um, like the Lambrettas, the electric ones are those. So there was an abundance of electric vehicles on the bike path that were not being ridden with awareness which got me to today's topic. So, welcome to number 366, by the way. I didn't say that first. These are my daily talks called Messages of the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And this one is number 366, as I've gone around the full year. Actually, more than that. I started over a year ago, but in a row, now 366. And I want to talk about boundaries, because I was aware that most people didn't have any, <laughs> versus enmeshment. And I'm going to talk to this about relationships. So, that's what inspired the talk. But I'm, I'm, I may refer back to it, we'll see. But what I'll speak to is, because actually, hmm, all right, yeah, hmm, 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 okay. <laughs> Just reviewing what's in my head. Um, today is Saturday, so Thursday night, I went to a talk that a friend of mine was leading and she actually invited me to come up front and speak with her on camera, which was really cool. And one of the things we talked about, or I talked about, because one of my favorite topics, is this thing about codependence. Because so many people in the world, and I did bring out the old, I dragged out the old, the old uh, adage that I use about how 90% of the love songs since the 1950s were designed to create codependence. Because, you know, you complete me, I can't live without you, um, all that stuff is basically saying, please be codependent, and it sucks. So the idea about boundaries and enmeshment speaks directly to that. So I want to get into this topic a little bit. Because you may have experienced this yourself, I know I have. By the time this broadcast is over, I should have, I'll hopefully get my, I'll settle my color down from relaxing after this bike ride. So, relaxing so too much, I think I'll cut them all down. Um, sorry, that was in my inside voice. <laughs> so boundaries versus enmeshment. There's, there's a philosophy going around amongst certain people I know of, um, where the idea about being totally enmeshed with, where souls enmesh in sexual high, um, polarity and expression and divinity and souls blending in utter orgasm. That's not what I mean. 
that's that's a different. So that's not so much enmeshment as much as, as much as that is that's a unification. I would say or something like that. So what I mean by enmeshment is the codependent model, which is really lack of awareness of self. Boundaries are more often than not when you have full awareness of self. So the common denominator is being aligned to yourself. Excuse me. My last coffee is reminding me that I just had it. So to inspire and um, inform you, first of all, I want to explain, say where I stand in this conversation, which is having healthy boundaries, whether you're single or not, even in a relationship to have healthy boundaries, because it's so tempting when you're in love with somebody to think you're to go above and beyond for that person no matter what, and the other person doesn't respect that. Because you can be able to give as much as you want as long as the other person respects that and honors you in return. That's okay to do. But when it becomes a place where the other person expects you to do all these things for them and you feel begrudged about it, that's enmeshment. That's also codependence. And it's not healthy boundaries. Hence the title. So if you're in a position in your everyday life, not even in a relationship, where people, maybe an employer, maybe a co-worker, maybe a relative, maybe a neighbor, friend, child who runs that racket and I'm using that term because I have friends of mine in Landmark who use that term and I'm not it's, not it's not my following but I that term comes in handy sometimes who's run their routine on you I'll put it that way where they believe you're at their service because that's what a lot of enmeshment's about is this thing where you don't know where you end and where they begin that's again no boundaries and that trap because it is a trap puts you in a position where you're giving beyond what you can comfortably do and it drains you if you've ever been in a relationship with a narcissist, this is extremely um, precarious and maybe even dangerous in a sense because you're taking care of yourself, or so say you're not taking care of yourself, which is a real challenge because in a relationship, if it's with a narcissistic personality, you will feel so um, initially loved and respected until you're fully involved. Like they'll, they'll pull you into their world so much that then they start to use you and will actually put you down, but you won't catch on until a bit too until it's too late because they've hypnotized you by how much they love you and appreciate you and take care of you and everything's great and wonderful initially. But then slowly but surely they'll start turning the ship in their direction where they get to use you for what they want and don't care about you anymore. And in fact, if you start standing up for yourself, they get very upset. That is where it gets dangerous. I don't mean physically necessarily, although sometimes it can be, but energetically and emotionally, because trying to extract yourself can be very challenging. So rather than do that, I would strongly suggest that you um, create firm, established boundaries for yourself when you're single or when you're first getting into a relationship so that when you're in a relationship with somebody, those stay firm. And a lot of that is having personal um, space, personal habits, personal commitments to yourself that you do not violate for anybody else. So for example, if you... Um, have a meditation practice or a health practice or a sleep requirement where you set up, okay, I'm going to make sure I sleep seven, eight hours a night. You can make that such a priority and a focus in your life that it's a discipline. That becomes a non, an, um, an inviolate, inviolate? A non, a violatable? Yeah, inviolate sounds better. <laughs> um, boundary that won't be crossed. And when you start creating those boundaries, it's actually, it's almost like putting, um, putting stakes in the ground in a fence to create the safety for yourself. Now, it sounds like you're creating separation from your partner. I don't mean it that way. You can be totally involved with each other and totally um, unified in the passion of love and connection and intimacy and everything else and still create healthy boundaries with each other. Because the thing about it is when you have healthy boundaries, when you have the healthy framework that you're both within your own separate frameworks, it actually heightens the ability to love each other. It's challenging sometimes when you get so close to each other and so... Um, involved that you don't know where you end, start where you end and they begin that's basically enmeshment and for a lot of people you start to lose track of yourself and that isn't healthy so having boundaries creates one it creates a healthy place that is it gives you a container to be self to self support yourself and take care of yourself the second part is that by doing that you actually become more appreciative of the other person in the masculine and feminine conversation I've talked about before and talked about this on Thursday at this event I'm going to get the video from it at some point and I'll share that as well on Thursday, I'm speaking of the event, I talked about the polarity of masculine and feminine and how it's the, um, it's this, it's the polarity of the opposites of masculine and feminine. 
like the yin and yang or the north and south poles of a magnet, the greater the attraction, the greater the um, polarity, the greater the chemistry, the greater the sexual um, intimacy and, and not just the intimacy, the sexual heights you can get to. By having healthy boundaries, you can create more of that polarity, which if you're in mesh, it's harder to do. So actually, for better sex, you need boundaries. <laughs> Try that one for size. So this is just a snippet in a sense. I'm just giving you some ideas to think about, to ruminate on if you're single or if you're in a relationship. Is like, do you have healthy boundaries? Do you have healthy boundaries around people you, go around, you hang around with? Do you look for certain people? Or, or are certain people that you're around where you feel totally like you dive into them, you don't really have any boundaries with them? Sometimes that can work, but rarely does it do that if you don't have healthy boundaries for yourself. So the reminder I want to give you is self-awareness. I just dropped the one right on you. <laughs> self-awareness as a, 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 a... What's the one looking for? A mode of operation. A um, operational... Well, self-awareness is a, as, a, as a foundation of your operating system. Let's try that as a te- computer term. Why not? Having self-awareness is something I saw a lot of people didn't have today. <laughs> that was selfishness, not self-awareness. Different. Actually, no, that was self-centeredness, not self-awareness. Self-awareness, let me try it this way. Being aware of your environment, being aware of yourself, being aware of, being aware of the way you interact with the world around you. This is probably the biggest part of the work that I, I've been on for the past for 30 years. And I recommend that if you haven't been, you start looking into that perspective of seeing where you are in the world, your framework and your, your way of looking at the world through the lens of your eyes, of your experience, of your heart, of that awareness, because that will tell you a lot about where your boundaries are and where they're not. So awareness first gives you that sense of spaciousness and that sense of inclusivity of where you actually do have boundaries, because if you don't have any, you might start putting some up. And they're not fences, they're boundaries, which are very different. Boundaries are taking care of your energy. They're actually, one of the highest levels of self-care that I know of. And for some, a lot of my friends, and this is one of my issues back in the, back, way back when, when I was doing um, one of the first seminars, there was a seminar I took, okay, this is coming up, um, back in the 80s where I started doing this work. And one of the ground rules of that seminar, which is in all their seminars, one of the ground rules is take care of yourself first so you then take care of others. I'll say that again. It was take care of yourself first so you can take care of others. Sorry, take care of yourself first so you can then take care of others. That was the piece I was missing. I didn't know that. I, I didn't know I wasn't doing that up until that point. In fact, to be honest, it took me about three or four years of that practice and that training to really get clear about, oh, hang on a second, to help other people better, I've got to take care of myself first. I didn't know that. And by taking care of myself, I created boundaries that were healthy because I kept drawn left, right, and center by pulled by different people different activities, different organizations that I was so dedicated to, I, would, I was draining myself. It took me a while to figure out where I was, wasn't having healthy boundaries. And now it's a very clear for me when I say no, it's important for me to say no to create that boundary. So it's not just about relationships and romantic relationships where this is important. This is important everywhere in your life, whether it's, <laughs> whether it's the email list that you're on, because I have had to, I've had to I'm subscribed and I'm saying this carefully because I know the people on my list might say, that oh, it's time for them to unsubscribe. If you need to, you need to. I'm not going to stop you. But the recognition is, is that if you have too many things that you are subscribed to, whether it's email lists, organizations, social engagements, business arrangements, clients, employers, family dynamics, if you're oversubscribed, that's going to stop you being able to have healthy boundaries and you're not taking care of yourself. So I recommend, I implore, I invite you. Implore not so much, but I invite you. So look at where you don't have those boundaries, where you are oversubscribed out there. So you can actually say, you know what, I need to unsubscribe from some of those organizations and places. I need to put back the energy on taking care of me. When you do that, the people you are subscribed to, I mean that term a lot now, seems to work. Then you can be more able to connect to them, to serve them, and to be healthy in the process you don't care of yourself. In your relationships, on all levels, not just romantic. This, this is starting to know a romantic, um, conversation about romantic relationships, but it's truly about every relationship. Boundaries are fundamental to live in a healthy way so you can participate, subscribe, and play wherever you want to play without draining yourself in the process. The only place I would say where you may want to not have boundaries is with your connection to spirit. That's, that's probably the one place I would say where there are, um, where that's enmeshed in a way, because I, I personally subscribe to the belief that we're all connected to spirit, so why not keep that connection open? 
and there are boundaries in the world. Because boundaries for me is a human three-dimensional experience, not a spiritual connection experience. Make sure I get that clear. So, I hope this has made some sense to you. Um, this is just another thing that comes up about relationships. There's, I've got three more already lined up, so I'm not stopping at the one-year mark. So I hope you've been watching my broadcast. There's plenty of these out there. This is number 366 of my daily talks. Um, <laughs> content keeps coming up. So I want to share this one today. There'll be something else tomorrow, I'm sure. Um, thank you for joining me. And yeah, I'm still a bit, it's a bit flushed from my bike ride. I'm going to go cool off a bit first. Um, next. Thank you for being with me. Thanks for watching. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, you can find them all on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Um, also on YouTube, where this will end up as well. And my YouTube channel is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And I'm going to create a video blog at some point on my website, even though the video blog I have now is one page, which is packed to the gills with all these broadcasts, which is very slow loading. But I'm going to create a video blog um, index on my website so people can watch some broadcasts there. If you're stuck in the area of love and relationships, so you want to make more sense of your boundaries and your enmeshment and issues you may be challenged by that, do yourself a favor. Get on my calendar and let's talk. If you go to my website, which is barryselby.com, click on the Let's Chat icon. Oh, gee, it's the navigation choice in the menu on the left-hand side. Sign up for a discovery session with me. It's a 30-minute conversation, my gift to you, and I hope you get some clarity. And if it looks like somebody we can help, work, I can work to with you to get where you want to go, I'll let you know that. And if not, so be it. It's my gift, so I think that makes sense. Get some help. Sign up. I'll help you. <laughs> um, homework. Yes, I know it's Saturday, but I tend to give homework, so I'm going to give it again. If you're someone who has had challenges with your boundaries, as I said earlier in the broadcast, t take a look cleanly at your experience. Sorry, Marshall, what was that? When next you take up this topic, I'm very curious about the actual questions to raise with one significant other regarding boundaries. Well, you know what? Since we're here, and since I haven't signed off yet, um, Questions with your significant other, that's a, good, that's a good question, actually. First of all, it's got to be self-awareness. That's the first piece. And that's the homework, by the way. Let me finish off the homework and then come back to this point. If you're someone who is not sure about your boundaries, start setting up boundaries for yourself. And it doesn't mean like, okay, no, 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 no to everything, although that might be one way of doing it if you don't know how to start. But be clear about everything you say yes to or everything you do without even saying yes. You just drop in and do it. Become aware of that. Start looking at your own circle of life around you anybody and again not just romantic relationships but everybody and see where you're actually doing things either automatically or you're saying yes all the time at thinking about it which is also automatic and where it is you're saying no if you're out of balance you'll notice that right away that's your homework so getting to the top it's a question Marsha um, actual questions to raise I would say the biggest question I would recommend if you're in that situation if you're the ones feeling like you're over enmeshed and not holding healthy boundaries, ask yourself, what am I getting out of this? What is it that I'm, um, what is it, what's the, because the price you're paying is not having healthy boundaries, but what's the assumed benefit you're getting from being enmeshed? And for asking some question with somebody else, the same sort of question is like, if, they, if they're not having healthy boundaries, ask them what they're getting out of it. Because as human beings, we tend to do what we think is the best thing for ourselves most of the time, even that may be negative. And if you don't have healthy boundaries because you're doing something which you think is more important, that might be the reason why. And then if that is a valid reason, that's different. But if it's not a valid reason, like it might be the taking care of an ailing relative, where they're, they're so spending all their time there to take care of them because they're dying. That's one, one random example. So there might be that point of view where you go, I understand that's a, that's a service, and it may be a debt they're paying. Maybe they're healing something for themselves. But the key thing is also is having healthy boundaries, meaning you take care of yourself first, as I said before, the ground rule I learned, is take care of yourself first before you take care of other people. Oh, let me go back to that point. I, I totally blew the point. In those seminars, I didn't realize that I was always giving, 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 giving to other people and not taking care of myself. It was a hard lesson to learn, and once I learned it, I never went back. And I learned the lesson powerfully because I had to learn for myself that if I don't take care of myself, I can't serve everybody. I can't help everybody. So, like, simple things. I don't have clients, on, I don't see clients usually on the weekends. I have one client I see because they're a friend of mine. But usually I see them only during the week to keep some space for my own life so I can take care of myself. That's one example. Um, but it was a powerful lesson because I didn't realize how much I was so t attached to being a... Oh, this is, this is the piece. Uh, there we go. 
one of the reasons why I didn't have healthy boundaries back then and why I didn't take care of myself first before I took care of others, as the ground suggested, was I was so caught up in being getting approval from other people. And that is a whole other issue right there. When, we're, when we are set up where we think we need to get other people's approval to feel validated, then we'll keep doing things to, to support that. And that'll take us beyond the ability to keep healthy boundaries. So one of the wiring pieces is if you're running this routine or this belief or this presumption that you need to get other people's approval, then you're going to keep going, giving, 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 and never take care of yourself. And that ground right I learned 